A giant underground eye in China is preparing to spy on the universe's most elusive particles and might one day send messages straight through the Earth. Deep beneath Russia, 47 tons of liquid metal just hinted at a possible new kind of matter that breaks our understanding of physics, and in New York, scientists may have entangled two completely different particles, something once thought impossible. These are more government experiments that broke the laws of physics. Deep under the ground in southern China, 2000 300 feet down, to be exact, scientists are getting ready to launch one of the most ambitious physics experiments ever built, a 12-story tall water tank surrounding a giant glowing sphere covered in 43,000 super-sensitive light detectors. This thing is called Juno, short for Jiangmen Underground Neutrino Observatory, and it's built to hunt one of the weirdest particles in the universe, the neutrino. Neutrinos are created by nuclear reactions inside the sun, inside nuclear power plants, even inside the Earth itself. They're everywhere. Trillions of them fly through you every second without you even noticing. What makes neutrinos so strange is they can switch between different types while traveling through space. Scientists still don't know how or why that happens, but figuring it out could unlock secrets about how the universe was built and why matter exists in the first place. Juno might detect neutrinos from inside the Earth and use them to study what's going on under the crust, which could completely change how we understand earthquakes and plate tectonics. There's even talk about using neutrinos to send messages straight through the planet. China's pushing hard to be the first. At the Baxan Neutrino Observatory in the Caucasus Mountains of Russia, more than a mile underground, scientists have been messing around with a strange mystery of physics, the gallium anomaly. Again, this has to do with neutrinos. They're already strange, but this experiment might be leading to something even stranger, the possible existence of a whole new type of particle called a sterile neutrino. The experiment, called BEST, which stands for Baxan Experiment on Sterile Trans transitions used 47 tons of liquid gallium, a silvery metal that melts in your hand, and they blasted it with neutrinos produced by radioactive chromium. The goal was to see how many times the neutrinos would hit the gallium and turn it into a different element called germanium-71. But when scientists went to count how much germanium-71 was made, the numbers didn't add up. It was about 20 to 24 percent lower than they'd expected, even though their measurements and predictions were very precise. This is not the first time this has happened. Older experiments saw the same types of results, which is why we have what's referred to as the gallium anomaly. One possible explanation is that some of the neutrinos are vanishing, they're changing into a form that can't be detected, a sterile neutrino. Unlike normal neutrinos, these hypothetical particles wouldn't interact with anything except gravity. That's why some researchers think we might be seeing the effects of new physics that break the current model of how the universe supposedly works. Still, no one's entirely sure what's going on. Either there's a flaw in the experiment that no one's caught yet, or this could be one of the biggest clues that something is missing from the laws of physics as we know them. At Brookhaven National Lab in New York, scientists may have just rewritten part of quantum physics. Using their giant particle smasher, the relativistic heavy ion collider, they came across a new type of quantum entanglement. So if you've never heard of quantum entanglement before, or it's a phenomenon where two particles become so connected that changing one will instantly affect the other, no matter how far apart they are. This is very real, and it's been proven over and over again in labs. But normally, entanglement only happens between particles that are exactly the same like two identical photons or electrons, but the Brookhaven team found something totally new. Two completely different particles were entangled. This experiment took place at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider, where scientists slam gold ions together at nearly the speed of light, but in this case, the gold ions didn't even collide. They just passed close by each other. Each ion has a cloud of photons around it, basically particles of light. When the photon cloud from one ion passed the other, it acted like a flat bulb setting off a super short x-ray type scan of the other ion's nucleus. What's weird is that this scan shouldn't even be possible under regular physics, because there was no physical contact between the ions. Well, the result was that two new particles popped out of nowhere, called pions, one positive and one negative, and they were entangled. 
somehow linked. According to Zhang Bu Zhu, one of the researchers, we measure two outgoing particles and clearly their charges are different. They are different particles, but we see interference patterns that indicate these particles are entangled. End quote. So, in short, this is the first time anyone's seen two different particles become entangled like this, and it could make scientists rethink how entanglement works altogether. Back in the 70s, a Russian physicist named Nikolai Kozarev started talking about time in a very weird way. He theorized that it was something you could tap into, almost like energy. He believed time had physical properties, that it could be detected directly, which sounds pretty insane, but Kozarev was a respected astrophysicist, and he did experiments using spinning gyroscopes, pendulums, and these mirrored chambers now known as Kozarev mirrors. These were large spiraled aluminum tubes that people would sit inside, and some of them said they had these out-of-body experiences and visions. The KGB supposedly took interest in his work too. The story goes they backed secret studies using these mirrors for everything from psychic research to remote viewing. Some some Soviet cosmonauts were even said to have used Kozirev mirrors in orbit to gather non-local information, which is a fancy way of saying they were trying to see or sense stuff from far away. Pretty bizarre. If you had a shortwave radio in the 70s or 80s, you might have heard a weird tapping sound, like a woodpecker. It may have come from the Duga radar, a massive radar system coming out of the Soviet Union. The thing was so loud and constant that radio operators around the world dubbed it the Russian woodpecker. Officially, Duga was part of a warning system for detecting incoming nuclear missiles, but unofficially, that's where things get strange. Some researchers believe the Soviets were doing more than just listening for nukes. They're were rumors that Duga was part of a weather control experiment, or maybe even a Soviet mind control experiment. The theory was that the radar was manipulating the ionosphere, which is the layer of Earth's atmosphere that reflects radio waves. The Duga site is now abandoned, but to this day, no one outside the Russian military fully knows what Duga was really doing. In the Cold War, the US Navy built a massive communication system using extremely low frequency radio waves to communicate with submarines deep underwater. The original plan, Project Sanguine, proposed burying thousands of miles of cables across Wisconsin to send messages even if nukes hit the power grid. That version got scrapped because there were a lot of people protesting the environmental impact, so a scaled-down system called Project ELF was launched. It operated from 1989 to 2004. Extremely low-frequency radio waves, or ELF waves, could reach submarines hundreds of meters underwater. Officially, these waves only sent coded two-letter messages and couldn't carry voice or data, but around the facilities, weird rumors started to spread. Some locals said animals would get spooked. And people would feel suddenly woozy. And there were conspiracy theories about how elf waves were distorting time and messing with the human mind. Since the early 2000s, governments like the US and China have been pouring money into quantum computing. Instead of using bits like a normal computer, which are either a zero or a one, these machines use something called quibits. Quibits can act like both zero and one at the same time, which means quantum computers can run through insane numbers of calculations all at once. This is possible because of quantum physics, specifically superposition and entanglement. The goal is to use this to break encrypted codes and solve problems that would take a normal computer millions of years. But a lot of the experiments going on right now aren't public. Agencies like DARPA, NSA, and China's Ministry of State Security are racing to be the first to get a working, large-scale quantum computer. That kind of machine would give whoever builds it a massive advantage, especially when it comes to spying and warfare. NASA's EagleWorks lab tested a propulsion device called the EM drive that claimed to generate thrust without any fuel. The idea was to bounce microwaves around in a sealed metal chamber and somehow push forward. No exhaust needed. Well, in 2016, the team said they measured a tiny bit of thrust. It was about 1.2 millinewtons for every kilowatt of power, which is super small, but still a big deal if it was real, because it looked like the engine was pushing forward without anything pushing back. That would break 
break one of the basic rules of physics, Newton's third law. But a lot of other scientists weren't really convinced. They thought the result might have just been a fluke, like a heat or a vibration messing with the sensors. Enter the Dresden University team. They built a much more sensitive test rig to measure the thrust and found that the tiny push NASA saw just might have been the device heating up and tilting ever so slightly. So yeah, it was exciting at first because it looked like a fuel-free engine could exist, but probably doesn't, at least not yet. Back in the early 2000s, Chinese military researchers started working on a new kind of torpedo that didn't move through water, it moved inside a bubble. This thing's called a super cavitating torpedo. The idea is that once it gets going fast enough, it creates a gas bubble around itself so it's not touching water at all. That means almost no drag. Ideally, you could have speeds of up to 230 miles per hour underwater. They were reportedly working on ways to steer it too, and if they pulled it off, it would break the physics of underwater combat. Normally, sound moves way faster than objects in water, but this thing could close the gap before anyone even detects it. And the Philadelphia experiment. It's been talked about in conspiracy circles for decades. As the story goes, in 1943, the US Navy supposedly tried to make the destroyer, USS Eldridge, visible to radar and ended up making it vanish from sight altogether. Some versions even say it teleported from Philadelphia to Norfolk, Virginia in the blink of an eye. The experiment allegedly used intense electromagnetic fields to bend light and warp space-time, basically trying to create a cloaking device way before anyone else ever dreamed of it. Supposedly things got really scary. Crew members reportedly got fused into the ship's metal, others went insane, and some were just never seen again. The story first came about in the 50s when a guy named Carl Allen sent letters claiming he had insider info on the incident. The Navy's always denied the whole thing, of course. Official records don't show any such experiment. But, like always, what do you guys think? I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.